The following podcast may contain some adult language. You've been warned. Those of you who got an invite, welcome to Nerd Prom. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all Nerds International with the hyphen. Welcome to Fighting the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast. This is a show dedicated to the Genesis role-playing system from Fantasy Flight Games, a show in which we, your hosts, discuss all things Genesis from both the players and a GM's perspective. I am Tony Fanning, and with me as always are my good friends and co-hosts, Chris Holmes and Stefan Dragonspawn. How are we doing, fellas? Chris, starting with you. Oh, I just told you I'm feeling like shit. <laughs> I've got been sick the last couple days, but we're going to press through and get, get her done tonight. But hey, I must say... My Eberron game the other night, the Sharn Grand Prix. Thank you for your help there, Tony and Jamie. The other day um, went well, and uh, it was pretty damn fun. Pretty damn fun. And I cooked Great. the the big ass Flintstone sized beef ribs. <laughs> smoked those. Good lord. And uh, yeah, how about you, Stefan? How you doing? I'm doing good. Better than you, uh, luckily, mm-hmm. and, uh, knock on wood. Mm-hmm. And, of course, I always appreciate your meat pics mm-hmm. that you send us. So, always <laughs> nice to see. Always, <laughs> nice big always a pleasure. Meat. Always a pleasure, buddy. <laughs> Other than that, no, doing good. Doing good. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, How about you, you, Tony? How about you, Tony? Yeah. Uh, I just come off of a weekend off. Like, out of nowhere, I ended up with a weekend off. It was, it, And I ended up doing nothing. I binge-watched... All of the first, all of the season of Hunters. That's oh all I did. Oh my god, that was awesome! That show was amazing. So, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. But I've, I did spend some time, quality time, writing our show for today. Yeah, you did. Uh, put a lot of thought into it. Mm-hmm. Um, wrapped my brain around it. Uh, so, <laughs> speaking we of which, for you, what's the name of the episode? <laughs> we have uh, episode fifty-two. Tales of the Epsilon Eclipse Mind Games. Awesome. <laughs> mind games, yeah. mind games. This will be our introductory course on how we are introducing the um, mentalism concept as uh, basically reskinning the hacking rules for Shadow of the Beanstalk as mm-hmm. a mind hacking yes. game, mini game, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, encounter. Uh, mm-hmm. Encounter. Is the type that would be so, fun? I'm looking forward to it, but first yeah, we got other things to get to, including boosting the signal. Hey, welcome to Boosting the Signal, everybody. This is where Stefan shares all the hot and sweaty Genesis news, fresh off the wire. Then he reviews a project from the Foundry. However, you have like about 12 of them, so why don't you get to it? <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, just, a handful. Well, our, just a handful of them. <laughs> yeah, just there's five. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> because our our fellow Genesis fans and creators are prolific, you know they're they're fanatical about this game. Even if uh, Fantasy Flight Games is uh, no may no longer be supporting it, mm-hmm. but we will continue we to digress. support it. And be, <laughs> yes. So anyway, mm-hmm. the first product, uh, Keith mm-hmm. Kappel, uh from a product uh, that he made a little while ago, Ready Fight, that we interviewed him for. Adds two more little supplements, little character uh, focuses, uh, different types of fighters that you can introduce into your campaign. Nice. One is called Darius Whitaker, more of a contemporary time uh, character. And just to show you that you can apply Ready Fight to other settings, he has the Dwarven Warden Stone Grip. Awesome. Yes, so a fantasy setting dwarf uh, focusing on fighting bare hands 
So a dollar US for the one for Darius, and pay what you want for the, for uh, for the war uh, the the dwarf uh, version. So you can try it out. Links in the show notes for all these products. And then we have by uh, Mikhail Shibalov and Ivan Yakovlev something called Gollum Craft. Uh, so this book provides you all the rules and uh, guidelines on making artificial characters, you know, basically golems, mm-hmm. uh, some that are controlled by the wizards or f- creator. So we, uh, they also introduce- so, so we could use that when we when we create our like hunter setting, right? The Jewish the Jewish Nazi yeah. hunters. <laughs> That's to create it. golems, <laughs> right? Yep, oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, if you want, uh, he, it even in, introduces uh, a new type of uh, golem, a bit like a, a mech suit, the golem knights, which can be actually controlled by a pilot or two, depending on your setting. Which I will be probably borrowing from my Dragon Star campaign. Nice. Um, so it has, of course, some customized uh, options. Uh, customization for the characters for golem use, so probably some talents and so forth. That's four bucks US. And then Caleb Smith uh, brings uh, the survivalist guide to survivalists. <laughs> uh, so this one includes focuses basically uh, on uh, kind of wilderness rangers. Uh, he includes some sample traps, more gear, some talents. And then human type archetype based off of cunning, just like the core book has a few ones based on other attributes. Have, have you looked at? Is, is that more a fantasy based survival, or is it more no. general, like post apocalyptic uh, as well? It can be applied to any setting. Okay, cool. It's a generic. It's not specifically just rangers. It could be nice modern rangers with guns or post apocalyptic. Uh, cool. And I'd like to. Um, just point out, it's actually called the Survivalist Guide to Survival. Oh, okay. So I mistyped that, or maybe I you, mis- mis- you mistyped it? it in your show notes. In the oh, in the like link uh, that you have in the show notes, it's correct. It's Survivalist oh, yes. Guide to Survival. Well, so I can't wait just for the fighters. To point that out. I That's okay. Wait. It was a test. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a test, and you passed. To create the <laughs> Fighter's Guide to Fighting next. There you go, right, Caleb. Get on that, buddy. Come on. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Clear Keith guide to clerking. That. That's right. Keith already <laughs> did that. True. So right, Keith, then, Keith, uh, Keith basically did the pugilist guide to pugilism, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was- <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Seven. Don't me. All right. Then next one you. is called. Well, it's a bundle. Well, it's available as a bundle or individuals. Adversary card templates that uh, RPG Narco offers. So you need the uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader, but it's little templates. Some of them are Shadow of the Beanstalk, you know, background. Uh, one is more Ro- Realms of Tyrannoth, and then one is a generic Genesis background. Uh, you can cool. buy them individually or as a bundle. I think on, they, were, they were on special one last time I looked at eight ninety five as a bundle. And finally is uh, Chris Markham. Uh, his... Uh, Zanagan Zoology, part one. So there's promise of more stuff. So he introduces 12 creatures to put into uh, the jungles of Zanaga in Tiranoth. But of course, you can transpose them on any kind of jungle setting if you want. Modern or post-apocalyptic or uh, ancient. And he includes actually a couple of adversary cards that RPG Narco made for those creatures. Available for just two ninety five US as well, so all the links will be in the show notes for that. It's pretty good. I, I got the Zanagan Zoology and the Golem Craft, and uh, you know, looks pretty neat. Cool. Yeah, and uh, I did see Chris Markham post on Facebook that he's coming up with more stuff. So yeah. he's got a uh, treasures coming. Yeah, okay. he's got a couple of things coming down the pipeline. So look, uh, look for that. Or just stay tuned to the show, and I'll talk, tell you about it. <laughs> and that was it uh, for the the new stuff. Well, excellent, Stefan. It's always awesome that you bring these things to us, and we hope that this little segment has boosted the signal enough to put some new and shiny things on your radar, folks, and maybe put a couple dollars into the creator's pockets. On 
All right, now on to our next segment where Chris finds something really cool on the web and talks to us about it. Something other than the foundry, but some just as cool. His 50 pieces of awesome. Take it away, uh, Chris. Why, uh, thank you, Stefan. <laughs> um, well, I found something on the forums by the fray called One Piece King of the Pirates Setting. Um, kind of a neat little take on a pirate setting. Um, in his opening, in his opening, uh, paragraph, he says, uh, you know, there's a man named Gold Roger getting ready to be hung. And his final words are, my fortune is yours for the taking, but you'll have to find it first. I've left everything I own in one piece. And I guess that's a place you need to go to. So everybody's kind of on a mass exodus to go find this treasure in one piece. And there's a bit of a, definitely an anime inspired. Um, definitely the art, there are things called um, like hockey mm-hmm. or hakai abilities. Help me out there, Tony, or you guys. Am I pronouncing Don't that right? Don't look at me. All right. I'm not the anime <laughs> guy. That's right. You're not. No. Um, well, it definitely has an otaku theme, yes. So anime. Okay. All right. And um, yeah, there's like 52 pages in this where, you know, just like any other setting that people have been putting out there, there's the mm-hmm. character creation with your talents and um, and gear. Also, because of the pirate setting, we also added ships and mm-hmm. you have pirates. You know, your um, you know, you're pirate minions and such, too. Uh, the way it's lays out magic though they are they look very similar to the force trees where you pick like a you buy a base magic power and then you modify it with your experience points and i've always liked that way of doing it too because you can build up your abilities um but i do i do like the off the cuff creating my own magic spell you know right off the bat but um this is pretty cool that gear is pretty evocative of the setting too, you know. Um, no, let's play. I play Merfolk. Good layout. Yeah, nice layout. Fishman, Merfolk. Though I don't see um, the uh, what do you call it? The floaties, right? Like the <laughs> no floaties. <laughs> yeah, no floaties on there's Oh, there's cyborgs. You can play cyborgs. There's a bunch of these sky tribesmen carrying a bunch of like big cannons. So. Um, yeah, it's, uh, could be a different take on it all. Yeah. On it. So. There a race, wasn't there a race like, like half Fox or something like that? I think so. Yeah. Yep. You'd be captain, a helmsman for careers, yeah. everything you'd expect in like a pirate setting, a cook, of course. Oh, of course. I love the fact that they called out cook as a career. <laughs> love it. That's great. It's very underrated. I'm sure. skills. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm playing a cook in a D&D campaign. Um, he's a cook. He's got flay knives that he throws there we go. at people. <laughs> so, Frying uh, pan plus three. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at um, at it, and this, the gear in here is real solid. Um, yeah. Even if you don't want to buy it for or pick it up for the, um, the anime theme pirates thing, there is a ton of little things that you can mine in here. Some some fantasy weapons that you don't see in um, other places. There's some um, flintlock pistols and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the poison gas grenades. <laughs> all that stuff is usable in a ton of other settings. Very good job with the gear. Um, mm-hmm. That just caught my eye. Is there's a lot of good gear in there. So Yeah. I'll definitely. second that. I'll definitely second that one. For and sure. I, and I thought I wasn't quite sure how to handle the uh, the uh, the looking at the the hockey or their magic as uh, the way they did them like force trees. Mm-hmm. I would have to see it in play to see if it's any. I mean, different mm-hmm. because it doesn't use a force die, so I, I'd have to see. Yeah, you know what I mean, right? I, I'm not sure. Yeah. So, but it could be good. Could be fun. Mm-hmm. Maybe you want to give it a try. If you've got some younger folks that are into anime, I, this will definitely catch them. I think so too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this it's is like, I top. mean, here's here's a here's like a, a like an example. There's a Conqueror's Hakai. Um, costs three points. Um, 
Hakai point cost. I guess that's like your level of Hakai, I guess. Um, so like the base power is like an action. You can make a willpower check to stagger an opponent with a lower willpower than yours. If you're in gauge range. Now that's pretty powerful. Staggering somebody? You could stun lock them. Take out their actions if they can't act. And then you can increase range and such. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Very good. Yeah, man. All right. Well, that's it. Well, it was a very good uh, document. Uh, I like it too. So there you go. Uh, the fray. Uh, so Chris, Tony, and I are handing you over 50 pieces of awesome. Maybe from the One Piece treasure. You never know. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> yeah. Are you on oh. cough medicine? <laughs> no, not quite. Hey, everybody, we're no, in, on we're peanut, on. Yeah, we're he's on, on peanut butter, well, peanut butter I, uh, well, medication. <laughs> well, I did have my hot chocolate toddy, though. There you go. Hot chocolate with that peanut butter whiskey. Yum. Mm. All right. Yeah, that'll that'll kill any bugs and All right. viruses. No <laughs> ran. I've, I'm already. Re- we're already recording, so I have to. We have to start, right? Yep. Okay, we will. I don't know if I'm going to cut out any of this. <laughs> mind games, everybody. Play mind games with you. <laughs> yes. So this is the section where we're going to go into the details. On I might have just hacked your brain. Mm-hmm. In the books of Genesis. Ha 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 ha. But it's not our books. It's a write up for our for our. Uh, uh, setting, Tales from the Epsilon Eclipse, where we're going to talk about how to run a mind... What are we calling this? Like a mind hacking? Are we mentalism using hacking? encounter. Mentalism encounter, that's what it is. <laughs> oh, duh. Into mental encou- mentalism encounter rules. Read your notes, homie. All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is going to mimic the um, like a network encounter, like a structured encounter. Um, it can coincide with combat or social encounters during it. And you would use initiative, uh, cooler vigilance with your initiative to start with. And then um, where do we go next? Well, in order to perform a mentalism encounter, a mentalist must first establish access or a mind link mm-hmm. with their target. Uh, which usually requires a mental intrusion check with adult, uh, with the, and the difficulty of access is equal to the subject's willpower score. However, if the subject is asleep or con- unconscious, that difficulty is reduced by one. The difficulty is then upgraded a number of times equal to the subject's ranks in mental discipline or ranks in the adversary talent, whichever number is greater. So in this instance, if you have a target that you're trying to hack who has a three will three willpower and he's wide awake, it's going to be three. And then you first check to see if he has ranks in mental discipline or if he has adversary. Whichever one is higher, you're going to upgrade equal to that number. Nice. All right. Now, would if somebody is like high on drugs or whatever, is that kind of a – would that be a – would that help them or hinder them from you being that, able to get out of brain? Or is that, that kind of a case by case kind of basis? Maybe I think that'd be a case by case, and that'd be yeah. a great place for a GM to spend, throw in some setback and uh, yeah. some boost dice, and or boost maybe, dice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, depending on like if you gave them a tailored drug cocktail to make them more susceptible to suggestion, then mm-hmm. yeah, there'd be boost dice. Or if you gave cool. them a, or if they were high as a kite on you know <laughs> snarf juice, uh, you yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> then if, maybe ah, another drink we need to put in the epsilon <laughs> yeah. put yeah. snarf juice oh no no, no. that's a drug <laughs> <laughs> if both the, if both the, the hacker and the hacky are on the same drugs like oh <laughs> dude we're on the same wavelength dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and i can even i can even see the, the wavelengths yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe it's a boost i and a setback then because yeah, they yeah, could just exactly. get distracted the bs for hours <laughs> yeah <laughs> Dude, what's that? What's the sound of one hand clapping? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the flutter of your heart, man. Yeah. You just can't hear it. No. <laughs> well, uh, but then. anyhow, yeah. So there is an initial check, just like there is an yeah. a, uh, network encounter. There's an initial check, um, and then we move on into uh, the next part of it, which is once the mentalist has 
access to the mind, you will immediately become aware of the presence of a mind maze or a neural network. Now, mm -hmm. the way I described that for my show ho or co hosts here earlier was I had this idea that mind maze would be what would be protecting a singular mind, which would be a, mm -hmm. you know, um, it would be have, have been created by a boggler to protect this person's mind. And so they're, they're going to have in their mind a maze that's going to make mm -hmm. it even harder for people to extract information. And that's basically, is it a simple network or is it a complex network? If you look at the networks in Shadow of the Beanstalk, that's what it's the differentiation there. Yeah, and okay. then the neural network was just a name for a mind maze for a hive mind type species like our insect race, um, the Zol. Or uh, one of the species of the Zol, one of the yeah. uh, offshoots, uh, mm -hmm. or the uh, the big enemy uh, bug creature, bug or husk creatures, whatever we have called them. Um, when we get to that, we've got some stuff on that in the future, but yeah. cool. they're kind of a hive mind too, and so they would have like a neural network. Okay. Um, so you uh, make your so you make your check. You're mm -hmm. in their mind, and then you become aware of these that there's a maze. Or this yeah. neural network. What else would we be able to get? Right, you're going to immediately detect the target's surface emotions, gotcha. which come as a single word description, such mm -hmm. as peaceful, angry, confused, and in some of the most trained minds, can be falsely projected. Ooh, and that is a great way to spend threat on a mental intrusion mm -hmm. check for awesome. GMs out there. I like that. Right. Excellent. So then, so if no um no mind maze or neural network is present or if they break down or if they get past those mind mazes or neural networks you can use um one of four what we're calling mentalist actions on the target um so if a mind maze or neural network is present you must defeat first the mental constructs that defend the mind of the target and this will work just like ice on net, like a net running encounter, um, and then uh, we'll be we're going to be creating and actually Stefan's got a pretty good, pretty good list of already of a few mental constructs and their roles that we're going to mm -hmm. be def that we're going to be creating in the future. Um, so let's get into these four mentalist actions. Um, what do we have for the first one here that you can do? Do you, you want to pitch in, Stefan? You want to read this sure. one? Sure. Go for it. Uh, the first one is maybe the easiest uh, or the most obvious would be extraction, where basically you extract information from uh, the host. Uh, this could be short-term memory, long-term memory, emotional centers uh, of the brain. And, of course, this action is always opposed by a uh, check with mental intrusion versus the subject's uh, mental discipline. And is never upgraded using the adversary talent. Why is that? Why did you put that in there? Uh, why did we put that in there? Why did I put that it is never upgraded uh, due to the adversary? Just because it's uh, it's the simplest and easiest form to perform. Right. That's why. Yeah. But if I'm really good at not wanting you to know what information I'm holding from you, why wouldn't then you I? Better have some ranks in mental discipline. Yeah, right. that's where the mental discipline ranks would. Automatically upgrade. Gotcha. But also, red. a really, really, um, a person who is really focused on keeping their information secure is going to also have a side guardian protecting them. At the same time. At the same time. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, and that's your chaperone character yeah. class that we have. But it's also a you know a um, adversary is a their your your people are going to have mental bodyguards. Your big right. bads in the game. Right. They're going to have not just physical bodyguards, but mental yeah. ones too. Yeah, I mean, I can. I mean, and I and I can definitely see if you're if you're if it's an opposed check, and you do have ranks in mental discipline, then you you don't want to continue to upgrade with adversary. That's it that doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. I don't think the adversary talent works that way, right? It doesn't. Mm -hmm. All right, gotcha. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Chris, go ahead with the next one. Sure. So the second action that we can do is, okay, so maybe we have retrieved that information. Well, we can erase it from your, inf in, from your mind. The short-term memory or long-term memory. 
Um, and that's a that's again an opposed uh. role, mental um, intrusion versus mental discipline. Check. And now this is it can be opposed by the adversary talent then. And this is the case where you may have someone who doesn't have any ranks in mental discipline, and you maybe as a GM may uh, decide to apply that adversary talent um, to um, that guarded. You know, mm-hmm. erasing someone's mind is a big thing. Erasing a memory, and so you want to be able to oppose it. So it, we left it open for the GM to be able to apply the adversary talent there instead. Yeah. I still feel like you should be able to do... I think we should do the same thing to extraction, too. Because extracting information is very important. It might be easy, but it is important, too. Okay. But it could be upgraded just the same way, right? If you don't have ranks and discipline, you can oppose... You could apply your adversary, I think. I'd I'd say, yeah, it could be an option, you know, depending on each GM uh, at at their table. uh, This has yet to be playtested, so we'll just change that right now. So both of those can be upgraded by the adversary talent. Mm -hmm. And we could even put the note in. um, If they don't have ranks in mental discipline. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, or use the greater of the two. Like you said, like like you mentioned with the... uh, Initial contact, you know. Yep, that's two. Excellent. That's true. All right. Yeah. So that was so that was erasure. What's the next one? Mm-hmm. So the third one, I'm really proud of. So that's why I wanted to read it um, mm-hmm. right. because it it invoked for me um, the whole concept of why we started this, which was um, we had a, somebody, one of our uh, listeners is like, this is like Inception! And I'm like, yeah. So, <laughs> the third is Inception. That's planting of an idea or an emotional state through a dream or directly into the waking subconscious of a subject. This is always a daunting mental intrusion check. Upgraded either by the target's ranks in mental discipline or ranks in adversary talent, whichever is greater. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter. Um, and I, I would even say, I actually would actually change that now to either daunting or formidable. So if they had five ranks in willpower, I would mm-hmm. make it a formidable check. Yeah. Um, if they had daunt, uh, anything four ranks oh, or see. less in willpower. So I would actually change that now to say daunting or formidable mental intrusion check. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. And and that, I mean, like I said, that is really hard to do. So it's going to be more difficult. And again, we want that adversary talent to work, and we want those med- ranks in mental discipline, whichever's better, to be right there, mm-hmm. preventing it. Yeah, you know, we could we could write that up for the for the daunting check or whatever. We could say, um, um. <laughs> It would be the difficulty is equal to their ranks in willpower minimum daunting, a d- minimum yeah. daunting check. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> be one way of doing it. Yep. Mm. Awesome. Or it could just be the re- it's always daunting unless their willpower score is five ranks, yeah. then it's yeah. formidable. And it's formidable, yeah. Because that'd be yeah. the other case where it's not. Yep. Well, yeah. Just like in the movie Inception, it, it wasn't easy for them to to do all that stuff. <laughs> there were many no, levels. And I would say, given I don't, know, I, you guys have both seen it, um, yeah. but there he did it once by accident, and he did it mm-hmm. once on purpose. And the first time he you did, in, well, I actually did it twice on purpose. Inception um, in the movie, the first time he did it on accident, he scored a despair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she, she came back to reality and thought reality wasn't reality anymore. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> yep, yep, boom. And right. then, Chris, if you want to take the fourth one, go ahead. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So the fourth one, this is the um, you can start singing. I have no strings to hold me down to make me <laughs> laugh to make me frown. This is the control. This is this is the the you're the puppet master. Over mm-hmm. this, over over your target, when you are trying to do a control mentalism attack or action, um, but there comes there's a cost. Oh, you yeah. have to spend a story yeah. point, and it is opposed by um, your mental intrusion versus a mental uh, discipline uh, with adversary ranks. But um, 
but it is so the mentalist action uh, can be maintained as a maneuver. Now, maintaining control inflicts strain on both you and your target. So this is going to kind of limit it because <laughs> you're only going to have so much strain, yeah. and so are they. So you pretty much got to get her done <laughs> if you can. Um, and so, if either one of you... Oh, go ahead, Tony. And the reason why I went with the strain inflicted on both the mentalist and the target, I wanted it to not be something that, okay, I will just, you know, I will crank my strain up as this uh, mentalist, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to buy five ranks in grit, and I'm going to make sure I get the the, 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 yeah. the race that has the highest starting willpower, yeah. and I'm going to have all the strain, and then, ha, 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 you know, I can control somebody for forever. Well, no, you're still limited by how much strain they can actually take, right, yeah. and it also prevents you from, you know, I'm going to get to the edge of the fortress, and I'm going to mentally possess a guard, and I'm going to walk him through the whole fortress to the king and stab the king in the heart. No, <laughs> you're not going to make it that far. Uh, he's only got f- probably between three and five strain before he goes down. Right. <laughs> you're not going to make it very far with him. So but well, if you're in the king's you open chambers, the but if you are in the king's <laughs> chambers, then you could you know control his you know the queen and have her stab him to death. <laughs> Yeah. She'll be sitting right there. <laughs> or or if you're controlling the guard, just like open the door. <laughs> open the gates. Yep. Lower the exactly. drawbridge. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's supposed to be a limitation. And yep. the fact yeah. that st- spending a story point uh, means uh-huh. that it's not something you're going to do all the time. Um, now this and- means so let me get let me let me ask, ask a question there. So spending a story point to do this mm-hmm. means you can't spend a story point. During your to upgrade your check or not? Yes, you that cannot act is, spend because it is not. It is part of the a- action to spend. Whereas a story opposed point. to other types of it, where mm-hmm. it's a maneuver or an incidental to spend a story point. In this case, it is part of the action. Right. So therefore, it you cannot upgrade your check. Right. So it is limited. Um, so I like that. And, and I like it, that being. Busy. And it is also I w- misworded it. It is supposed to be mental intrusion versus mental discipline with e or adversary ranks whichever is greater i was it yeah. was supposed to be yeah we'll um, be. okay so we can clear that up definitely yeah yeah so yes, then control. i don't you know if we control. I, I don't know if we specifically said this but i think i, I think everybody kind of gets it um the link will be broken if either the target or you exceed your strain threshold <laughs> like if it takes you unconscious yeah. bah, well, that's it. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it. If the target is, un- is unconscious, well, there's not much you can do. Okay, you that's control right. if he uh-huh. snores or not. That's about yeah, it. <laughs> maybe. Um, so yeah, so that's so that's control. And Tony, well done on that. I I yes. like how that came together there for sure. Actually, all of these. I liked how all of these these actions oh, came together. Yeah, no, it's a very it. good starting point. And, uh, Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we do have another bit here, Stefan, or. Yeah, um, I'll pick it. I'll finish up. Sure. And it just uh, talk a little bit about Psy Guardians, or Chaperones, as they're sometimes called. Uh, when they're actively defending someone's mind from intrusion, they can use their own you know, uh, incredible uh, mental discipline and, and their talents to oppose a mentalist's action instead of the target's. So this is their specialty. That's where they shine. Maybe someone like the king is not trained to resist uh, mental intrusions, but this guy is. Nice. He's hired to do that, and they can attempt to trace a bit like Cyclops and uh, Shadow of the Beanstalk mm-hmm. where the mentalist is, uh, his identity, and just lock him out. Like, no, you shall not have him. <laughs> awesome. And just shut him out. <laughs> Shut him out instead yeah, of close, out. Shut him out. Yeah, close the mental Get fortress, the raise the drawbridge. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you so that, shall not pass. <laughs> so then down the line, in a few episodes somewhere, we're going to have a bunch of our um, our equivalent to ice and icebreakers, which I think mm-hmm. we've pretty much ironed down a name for. Uh, those mental yep. constructs that we you know, have are going to be called either armaments or uh, fortifications. Right. Um, and those will be the, um, the basically the, the mental tools used by the 
intruder and by the defender Mm -hmm. to defend the various aspects of the mind. Mm -hmm. And the idea is it's not necessarily loaded with nodes. You're not like a a network encounter where you have all these nodes that you can go to that and activate different things. You may have one level of um, fortification that protects your long-term memory. You may have a different level of fortification that protects your short-term memory. You may have uh, two levels of fortification that protect your emotional or, or your um, subconscious so that you're, you know, have that protection from inception. Um, and mm-hmm. all that stuff would have to be broken down before you could even attempt to control someone. Right. Yep. So, so I guess we'll have to work out also what the mind is made up of, you know, what kind of sections like you, you, you were saying long-term, short-term memory, subconscious emotions. Do we yep. separate that? Uh, Emotional center and then motor control, I think was control. the last one. Yeah. Right. And that was, and the medulla oblongata, of course. <laughs> gotcha. Well, here's a, here's, here's a question for you. So I want to, I want to piss somebody off. Okay. okay? How do I do it? How do I how do I get their emotions to to bubble up? I'm in a social encounter, or my face of the party is working these people up, and I want this guy to lose a little bit of control. How would I? Do oh, that's that? easy. Oh, that's easy. You go on MeWe and say my game <laughs> system is better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works in nerds international community. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I, unfortunately, it's not going to work in say uh, I don't know a random bar somewhere where they've never heard of role playing games. Oh damn. So <laughs> yep. Um, How you, you know, in this that? case, you're going to, you're first as the mental intruder, you're going to try and intrude his mind. Yep. And that's mm-hmm. going to be that initial encounter mm-hmm. uh, yep. role. That's going to be that uh, difficulty equal to his willpower upgraded by his uh, uh, ranks in mental discipline or adversary, adversary, whichever's greater. Or adversary. Um, that's good too. Ever, adversary. Or adversary. Um, <laughs> um, and then uh, if you succeed at that check, you're then going to know whether his mind is protected or not. And if right. it is, then you're going to have to get past that protection. Gotcha. Eventually, once you're past that protection, now say you want to go right for the emotional center. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to see, okay, he does have a mind maze. And over his mind maze, in his mind, in place over his emotional centers, he has a, say, crenellation uh, type of... Um, fortification there to protect it you will then choose your mental uh attack Uh that you want to use to break it Mm -hmm. and um just like in shadow of the beanstalk with the ice versus icebreakers that whole encounter is going to work like that then once you've gotten access to that node why his emotions are yours to control right you have to you have to have a clear just like in Shadow of the Beanstalk, you have to have a clear set of what you want it to do. It's a simple command. I want him to b- lose his temper and get angry. Right. Okay. With right. success <laughs> on that check mm-hmm. to uh, you put in that – that is inception. You're I think putting so. In, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. You're here. putting yeah. in that emotion. Yep. So you're going to then make an inception check. And if cool. you're successful, boom, he's angry. Nice. You wouldn't want me when I'm angry. Then he's going to turn green and whoop up on Uh Stefan's character. I know. But if he was already, if he was already, say, calm and cool and you want him nervous, that's actually kind of dialing him back a little bit. Maybe it's more like extraction where you're extracting away his coolness and he's left with anxiety. Oh, I see. So you can retrieve or extract an emotional center, an emotional center of the brain. Okay. That's cool. Yep, just want just uh, that nope, popped that, into my head. That popped in my head. Just kind of you want it quantified, to, right? Yeah. Well, kind of just to kind of see. Yeah, if these are some of the things that I would do. What else would we? Yeah. What else would we want to do? I mean, would we want? Would we use this during a combat encounter? You could totally that? use it during a combat encounter if your mentalist is standing right there. Yeah. He could hack that enemy commander mm-hmm. and have him give orders. Like control with via inception or control, or control to enemy troops. Nice. Yeah. Maybe Make him you, lose his maybe, nerve and yeah. Maybe you use inception to give him the idea of a tactical retreat. Oh. Yeah. Or 
maybe you uh, get into the mind of that sniper and take a and extract from him uh, his orders, uh, finding out who he was there to shoot. There if you, you walk into a like an espionage encounter and you find, or you're, I'm sorry, an ambush and you find this sniper and you see him and you want to try and stra- extract from him, who is his target? Who is he shooting? As a mentalist, you're going to have that ability to have the well the flexibility mm-hmm. although this encounter is going to run alongside social encounters and combat encounters you're going to have the flexibility to be able to affect all situations right because there, every time there's a mind involved you have an in yeah 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 so you can erase the short-term memory of that sniper oh what was my yeah. target again oh crap oh what were yeah. my orders? What Crap. were my orders? That's right. Yeah, Un- unnerved that commander was like, uh, right. "I've lost my. I don't know if I can lead these men. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna retreat, and they are uh, all going to to panic." It's like, <laughs> cool. Our fearless leader is going is, is leaving. What? <laughs> nice. We were, we were winning. <laughs> all right. Well, because in a way, yeah, it's, it is no different than hacking a, a computer uh, in a combat encounter. While mm-hmm. bullets are flying, you're trying to hack. You know, a nearby drone to, uh, to to stop firing and maybe fire on your opponents. <laughs> but, you know, like in Shadow of the Beanstalk, when you're hacking somebody, you're mm-hmm. kind of in between two different worlds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And same thing is going to be the case for that mentalist. You're going to be exposed to those gunshots flying around. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Behind cover. <laughs> yeah. You better hope you have cover. You better hope you have some friends with some bullets or with some guns nearby or swords protecting you. Yeah. Yeah. And armor. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Well, hey, are we ready to um, maybe move on to advantageous threats and play out some of this mind games? I think Come on. so. All right, let's do it. Okay, no, no, no. Good. Good. Right. Come on, I'm recording. Now that Chris is done hearing voices, welcome to Advantageous Threats. I'm only... we, <laughs> this is where we build, roll, and narrate the die results on some simple checks or short encounters for your entertainment and hopefully for ours. Oh, wait, no, for ours and hopefully for yours. That's right. <laughs> um, so uh, I developed a little tiny encounter here, kind of that uh, mentalism encounter for these guys. I am GMing some Tales of the Epsilon Eclipse. As the barkeeper, mm-hmm. I have mm-hmm. tasked the patrons, that's the players, to sneak into a mental hospital and extract from the infamous and utterly insane master mixologist Orson Koblerone the location for his long lost recipe for the, wait for it, Grain-forged gasoholic grundle gouger, a powerful <laughs> drink that he once mixed, especially for a dragon emperor on the far world of far on the uh, lost world of Far Shroud. Uh, communication with the mixologist is utterly useless. You've been told he's a catatonic vegetable. Someone is going to have to use metal- mentalism to hack his brain, mm-hmm. which appears to be protected by some unknown entity. Ooh, so what I've got is I've got basically you guys have snuck into the mental hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, you've uh-huh. BS'd your way to getting into his room somehow, whether you used, mm-hmm. you know, we used a social encounter to get past the, the, the yeah. night nurse or whether you guys use disguises doctors, to get in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we're in. Either way, we're in, you're man. in. Now, you're in the antechamber outside his room. Mm. He is kept in a separate chamber away from all the other patients. This okay. chamber itself is... It's a steel, circular chamber. There is one barred window on a heavy steel door. One Mm. entrance, one exit. Inside, he's on a gurney, and he's got all kinds of feeding tubes going into him. Okay. Now, let's first introduce ourselves. Who do we have in this encounter? We have Chris. 
Yes. I am playing a Zemelian interceptor or side detective named Sir Didymus Bacon with his brilliant wit and experience in mental intrusion, tinkering, medicine, and all things brilliant, because that is what he is. <laughs> Esquire. Sure Esquire, yeah, <laughs> Didymus Bacon Esquire. <laughs> Who are you playing, awesome. Stephen? I am playing the very sinuous Serena Cocheri, the Aquilar mind diver. The, basically a, nice. a mentalist or psy hacker. Good thing you said mind uh, diver. Yes, mind Sorry, diver. That's so bad. Where she comes from, they're considered mind divers. Nice. She's a blue skinned, uh, amphibious kind of human race. Excellent. Specializing yeah. in mentalism. And you're you're probably you're better at that than I am. You have more more stuff than that. Uh, so I'm thinking I, I'm thinking maybe if I do a check before you and take maybe any goods that might come off of mine and pass along to you to maybe sure. focus on her mental the this pa- the patient's mental state. Maybe do some sort of mentalism healing or something because he's in this catatonic vegetable state maybe right. some sort of maybe pull him out of that a little bit for a moment if I could yeah or so, at least well, scout, scout out the, the train the mind maze sorry <laughs> no, from outside the room you can you can start hacking his mind you're close mm-hmm. enough right or you can try to get into the room and uh, affect it, the encounter that way too um with like, uh, if I brought like a, I'm I'm guessing spending one of those story points that we have there. Okay. Hmm, yes. Um, that so we've many. um that that I that I made some sort of anti-vegetable coma cocktail, if you will. gotcha <laughs> right. Still okay. maybe potentially make so I might make a medicine check on this to maybe inject him with it, um, or use like a mentalism check to try and well you know from maybe a would, distance i don't know what do we want to do maybe, well maybe that story point you know you we, we found out that uh he's a mixologist and he had his own favorite drink which helped him stay focused and stuff and he was he liked it and we found the recipe for it it's something that oh, he which, really which, likes. Which, which is, he, we know, so I made, okay, so there His we go. favorite drink. So I made sp- something special for him that we know that he responds well to. We've all, we've known that he's okay. responded well to. All right. So now you've spent a story point. And yep. You, mm-hmm. But you're still outside the room. Somebody's yep. got to get access to the room somehow. Right. All yep. Right. Um, I'm That's actually, fine. I will go ahead and make a mechanics check. Um, to break into the room or have some or create some device that will um, not necessarily blow the lock, but maybe just get us in to the room. How about that? Okay. Serena has a bit of skullduggery. Maybe she can help him try to minimize the damage by uh, <laughs> get make in. it a little, make it a little sneakier. Sure, yeah, throw a boost die in there. there boost die in there. All right. Well, All right. He's I'm, got... this is gonna be this is gonna be an average check. This isn't very. Uh, yep. High security. Since the guy is in a catatonic yep. state, there Got doesn't it. appear doesn't appear to be any um, diff, you know, powerful locking mechanism or anything here. It's just a okay. simple lock. So I have um I have uh, a four intelligence because I come from that Renaissance era race of humans that are mm-hmm. very um intelligent very in that regard. Yeah, smart. Very smart, yo. Um. So I'm going to be doing that. So that's going to be two, and he's got two in mechanics. So two mechanics, so that'll be two yellow, two green, the boost die. And then an mm-hmm. average check, that's two purple. Okay, I'm going to be spending one of my GM story points to upgrade that, because I know something you don't know. Mm, there we go. Excellent. <laughs> I can only imagine what that might be. Now, there is this brilliant... <laughs> let me get, look real quick. There's the brilliant... Ability Talent. that I have. Oh, like Once per session, story point as an as incidental. If they do so during their next check, make during that tune count their ranks and the skill being used as equal to their intellect. Hmm, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. That'll be my usage of the of a story point. I will do that. So, my intellect is a four. So we're doing four yellow. 
Nice. As if his mechanic skill is. Four. And I actually so need to get out. Overall, you have four you yellow, have blue, four yellow, a blue, a blue, die. Mm-hmm. A boost die, yeah, and a red and a purple. Roll it up. This is to get it in. This is to get into the room. That's important to get in there. It sure is, and holy success, Batman. <laughs> we did. Um, well, two successes, two advantage. Um, Very nice. And I think, and nothing came up on the boost die. Um, so I'm like, no, I'm going to turn the tumblers to the left. Don't worry about All it. Right, Not fine. to the right. It'll right. be to the left. <laughs> so for well, the two advantage, maybe um, maybe uh, we're not heard. You, no clis- you, you notice and clip the wires to the alarm. Oh, As I'm going in there. The, what I didn't know was there, but I kind of did. As a player, no. I, that's something I would do as a dungeon master or a game master. <laughs> say. Absolutely. This ain't a dungeon, dude. Yep, and especially if they don't ask if there's a trap. A if they don't ask for the trap and I didn't have one on there, I might even just throw yeah. one on there just because. Yeah. <laughs> Did I right, say there's something? No okay, so you guys are in the room now, and uh, uh, Chris's character is holding the. Uh, Sir Didymus is holding the door open. Mm-hmm. Uh, Serena, what are you going to do? So Serenia, of course, now she's in the room, so she will establish a mind link, which is what we were supposed to do, right? Uh, before hacking. Correct. All right. So she's got three ranks of her mental intrusion. Okay. So you have your positive dice. Now, the negative dice yep. are going to be his willpower, uh, but it's going to be one uh, less because he's in a, a vegetative state. He's in a coma. Right. right. So... It is going to be four difficulty for his willpower. Okay. Um, then uh, he has one rank in mental discipline. Right, so, so we gonna, upgrade one. Yeah, he has no ranks in adversary, so just one single upgrade. All right. But, as I said before, he is utterly insane. So right. um, this is alien territory here. We're going to go ahead good. and throw two setback dice on him. Okay, gotcha. Nice. All right, so three yellow, three purple, a red, and two black. Okay. That right? All right. So let's go for it. There we go. All right. Well, the red came out blank as well as one yellow, but I do have a triumph. Ooh. This one, one setback came back blank. I do have a threat on that one. Uh, let's see, a success, two successes, an advantage. I have one failure, so that takes away that <laughs> success. <laughs> All right, so I'm left with an adva- success and an advantage. And uh, But I do have some other threat. So there we go. A success, three threat, and a triumph. All right. So well, I managed to get the link. I dive sense. into his mind. Yeah, you you're in now. Yeah. What I had said in the ir- in initial uh, encounter rules is that once you're in, you become mm-hmm. aware of whether mm-hmm. there is a um, a neural network at place <laughs> or a mental maze. Right. Uh, why you are aware. Uh, there isn't one of those things. There is something else. Oh. There's, and if you would like for your triumph, I'll let you kind of get a glimpse of what it is. Yeah, no, definitely. Okay. There is a little creature attached to his spine. A yith grub. Ooh. And this uh, yith grub yeah. is... Yeah, you guys know the Yith Grubs are the legions of the enemy in our setting. Oh, shit. This, right. this Yith Grub is dormant. It's also in a coma. Ooh. But it is only so because he is pumped full of drugs, and it is monitoring his mental state. Ah, all right. So hmm. tread lightly. It yeah. is, it with three threat. It is starting to come to. Oh, all right. Oh. So I, I quickly mentioned that to Didn't Sir. Uh, yes. Sir, Sir Didymus comes over. All right. So I come over, and um, 
<laughs> so I've got the cocktail. <laughs> this yes. little cocktail that I was thinking I was going to inject into him. Might be thinking I might want to inject it into this thing. However, comma, let me see what the inventor talent does for me. <laughs> I might create something on the fly here where I might be able to remove this sucker. Maybe I could remove it with a medicine Oh, it'd be maybe? full surgery to remove this thing. This thing oh, is what? a gift group. It's All attached right. to his spine under the skin. All uh, right. Well, it could, and you know yith grubs could spontaneously mutate people, too. Okay, well... I think, um, you know what? I'm going to inject this thing with that cocktail yeah. <laughs> instead and make a and do a uh, medicine check, maybe. To medicine that, right? check. All right. All right. Let's do that. Okay. So right. I have. No, well, now that it's kind of coming to and it's actually self aware, mm-hmm. we're going to stop right there for a second and yeah. we're going to roll initiative. Uh-huh. Well done, so- sir. You guys are going to be rolling Vigilance, mm-hmm. and it will be rolling cool because it is waiting in ambush. Oh. But when we roll cool as well because I know it's there? No, mm. you're rolling Vigilance All because right. you just found out it's there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this this thing is rolling its Vigilance, which is one yellow, one green. And Vigilance so. is based off of... Uh, Will. Willpower. Willpower. Right. Okay, so I only she doesn't have Vigilance as well. Okay, right. so I have three point zero one. What does uh, what does uh, Sir Didymus have? I need to roll it real quick. I don't know what it was. Um, two. Um, all right. So I'm going to say he's got one rank in vigilance since it is a career skill, um, and he's got a two willpower. We're going to say oh four advantage. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> zero point zero four. All right. Mm-hmm. And Serena is lucky with only two green dice. She rolls. Three successes and an advantage. All right, so you take, you win the tie. Nice. So, All right. So I. So one player, well, mm-hmm. then the bad guy, uh-huh. bad creature, and then well, another player. I'm wondering maybe I should maybe I should go and try and yeah. do the do the medicine check in this thing before it. That's it. Yeah, exactly. hacks That's your mind. <laughs> prefer, yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to suggest. Okay. Yes. All right. You All go right. ahead. So let's do that then. All right. So I have again intelligence for. Two ranks in in medicine for uh, two yellow, two green. Um, I do have the cocktail available. I don't know if that gives yep. me a boost die or not, or if well, it maybe gives you, a s- you spent a story point to have it prepared in advance. Yeah, yeah. I feel this is re- lets you upgrade it. Oh, cool! All right, oh, there you go. Perfect. Now, difficulty is going to be hard. So okay, three that's three. Difficulty. Three purple. But the adversary trying, of this thing is what? <laughs> but you're trying to do a physical attack with medicine on a creature with one rank in adversary. So mm. upgrade that. Upgrade that. Yeah. <laughs> and it is underneath his skin. So throw a setback die on there as well. All righty then. That's what I should have took that for it in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there we go. Three yellow, a green, a red, two purple, and a black. All right, here we go. And it's up like that. Here we go. Okay. Um, we do have a success with three advantage. Um, so definitely inject it and okay. get the serum in it. So what does that what does that do for my success? Well, you wanted it to be calm, right? Well, what I made the cocktail to to do was to bring it to bring this guy out of well, because we knew he was a vegetable, but we wanted him to respond, his body respond to a cocktail to make it easier for um, Serena here to yeah. get into his mind. So this sounds like basically like effectively putting a curse on it. Feels like that. Uh, and and dropping its um, it, it, one of its green dice off of its its opposed rolls or a purple die off of its um, uh, difficulties. Its protect- some yeah, protections. Yes. Yeah. That sounds good. I to think me. The green, I like that. Uh, yeah. I like on that. the opposed checks, it's going to lose a die. Okay. Uh, whether mm-hmm. it's on its side or yours. Mm-hmm. Now on its side, it's rousing. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got three advantage to spend, yeah. and what I would like to to use those three advantage 
for is to protect Serena from any mental attacks this thing might do to her. Okay. This round. Yeah. It's completely unaware of her presence. It's just aware that something is Mm. prodding its patient. It's... Uh, it's host. So you know what? Speak. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe. Let's say it doesn't. Let's use the. Th- can I use the three advantage to um, po- pro- prolong that around? Maybe yeah. it's not necessarily where it, de- it delays it. It delays around. it around. Yeah. Sure, let's okay. do that. That right, feels so like three advantage, maybe. So this round, it's just kind of rousing and not really know why it's rousing. Mm. So its first thing that it would probably do is to reach out and try and establish a closer mind link with its host too so that it is well i thought i aware. said it. i thought it was it, it's not it was aware that idea. you guys are in it it's i'm saying it's going to uh, just get in it's going to be in the mind as well now gotcha but it's not aware of you guys it's just, just it's just checking it's basically running a a sysops a, yeah. s- a sweep so right. Right. run it just suspects it mm-hmm. suspects something uh, no no it doesn't suspect Mm-mm. anything just it's awake okay. now might as well run its normal routine of checking okay all right um so uh that difficulty is the guy's willpower uh mm-hmm. which was five reduced by one because he's asleep uh but go ahead and add one to it because of my because i succeeded right it's got yep it's got um Okay, we can put that in as an added. I was going to take off a yellow from its, or uh, sorry, a green from its 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 pool because it's kind of drugged. How many how many dice does it have? It has two yellow, so I was going to actually drop one of those down to a green. Um, sounds pretty good. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. All right. Mm. Oh yeah, it failed. Uh, both of my positive dice came up blank, and I've got nice. like four failures and a threat. Two. Two. All right. So it runs its its little uh, scan. And it's scan. like, yeah, we're still under the radar. With the threat, it's really groggy. So it's going to get a yeah. back <laughs> on its next action. Also, sounds All good. Right. That sounds okay. good. Kind of so it wakes up. <laughs> it just feel its slithery presence <laughs> starting to wake <laughs> up inside oh. him. So I would, I would imagine this looking like because like, she's she's more. diving into his mind. It's water that's all churned up because of his insanity. Things are floating upside down. Oh, awesome. Boats that are floating upside down on the and water. There's something deep, yeah, deep mm-hmm. in the water that is starting to churn the water. Yeah. Oh, I would what say is, like a big octopus kraken thing, like it's a still Leviathan slumbering. type thing. What is yes. what is Sir Didymus whales seeing? floating above the waters and mm-hmm. seagulls underneath? And <laughs> what is what does Sir Didymus great. see? How does what does uh, Serena look like when she does this? Just oh, kind of she's full on out of gigantic it? orca mermaid <laughs> when she's diving. <laughs> okay, so you nice. turn into one when I'm I'm just no, saying no. what is she what oh, is no, she, what does she physically look like? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Oh, outside. What is, what is she, looking like? Oh, she's one of the. She's she's a blue blue skinned, obviously, um, but uh, she sees more of a mind diver. She's she's not the most alluring aqualar. Aquali- aquali- what is what is she doing? Does she have the three fingered uh, Spock mind oh, meld okay. touch? What that's what I'm wondering. What does that look like? So I want to. Oh, let's. So she's what bent am I over seeing? The, the, what am I seeing? She's bent over the. Uh, the, tr- the litter, the bed, okay. and she's got the, the hand a bit like uh, Abe from Hellboy. Oh, cool. And All right. With one hand on his head and temple and one on his chest. Nice. Okay. Because cool. also the heart is also very important for her. <laughs> awesome. All right. Very cool, nice. Dude. Well, it's like her it. turn. Yeah. All right. So she'll try to – she knows at least – What's there? There's something there menacing. Mm-hmm. So she'll try to stay under the ra- the radar of that thing and uh, try to ex- find the information that she needs in the the, mix- the mixology uh, recipe. <laughs> okay. Well, where do you think it would be stored? You have several That's sectors of his brain. You have right. his emotional center. You have his motor control center. Mm. You have his short-term memory and his long-term memory. Well, I think this is something he, that he's created a while ago, and he would have put it in long-term memory now. <laughs> so, okay. 
All right, so you're so going to go to that center there. of his brain, which is exactly. not protected. Mm. However, because of the yith grub, mm. um, the difficulty is... Oh, it's still the same. Sorry, because he's still asleep. It didn't right. wake him. So, so three three purple or red. Yes, two All purple right. and a red, and uh, his insanity will provide two setback dice. Two setback <laughs> dice. All right. All right. So three, still three yellow, three uh, purple, red, three, two black, and um, I would flip one of those story points. Because now she seems a bit more familiar with the lay of the water, <laughs> the ocean, and uh, can try to stay uh, stay low and not be detected by the kraken. <laughs> and you said this is why you're flipping a story point. Yeah. So now all the story points are on the GM side. Oh, all right then. Ooh. All right. So that means I just added an extra green. All right. So. So. Yeah, that thing is there. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and spend and spend put one. Point. Yeah, I'm going to spend Sorry. one too because that thing is there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so two red instead of uh, just one red. All right, let's go. Come on, despair. No, no despair. But oh. We have a threat and, uh, and, a, and a failure there. So that takes that out real quick. The bones Ooh, boy. tell me yes. what did the oh. tell me. I need <laughs> Let's that see. Blood, oh. bloody ticket not, bounce. Not, not good. Not good. Three failure and an advantage. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so as she's swimming through all this chaotic mess that is his mind, is his mind, uh, she starts getting tangled up in some of the, uh, some yeah, of the she stuff. She sees the chest. She sees yeah. the chest that is locked away. Mm-hmm. With his long-term memory, but it's in a kelp forest, and she's starting to get yeah. kind of bogged down in it. Well, that's it. There's a wreck of a ship, and you know, there's the bar behind the chest where it presents the mixology <laughs> stuff. Awesome. <laughs> but then the chest contains the actual recipe. So yeah, there's all kinds of stuff uh, there, and other predators. You know. What do you want to do with your wear. advantage? Uh, let's see. Mm. Yeah, she's she's getting tangled, but because of it's a tangle of forest, the yacht group does not detect her yet. We've already established that. That'd be a waste yeah. of your... It right. hasn't detected you. That'd be a waste uh, of your advantage. If okay. you want, just say, you know, we'll p- p- apply some positive advantage to the next player to go, and yeah, we'll that's work them. it in. All right, okay. fair enough. Yeah. All right. Trying to be more narrative, so, but sometimes you, sometimes you just can't until yeah, you know you what's next. That's mm-hmm. it. So, so that's right. uh, end of round one in our first round of this encounter. Now we go into round two, and it's a player. Yeah, I'd say right. continue on with your yeah. with your with w- what you're doing. So all right, take, okay. take, take that so piece going. Out. Yeah, maybe she's she's dealt with this type of kelp before. This yeah. analogy right. of kelp, yes. and she just needs to slow her swimming pace. Right. AKA, yeah. she's going to be giving herself a boost die right. by calming, calming herself That's down. It. Or she could take out her mental machete. Her trident of iron will. Or so you can take out your mental your, maul and crush the treasure chest once you get to, Sorry. Yeah. Back to your uh, difficulty that you had before, which is yep. three purple and a red and two yep. setback dice. And two setback dice. Mm-hmm. All right. And the boost dice. So there we go. And the three uh, yellow. Of course. All the right. Boost so dice. I'm good with the roll. I'm not going to mm-hmm. flip. I'm not. Yeah, I'm right. going to go ahead and flip a story point over right. as, again, the Leviathan waits. All oh. right. All right, come on. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, well, no despair, but the red dice still came up some nasty stuff. So those... <laughs> oh, chicken bones. What's yeah, exactly. So chicken bones, chicken that bones, and that what one. Do you tell me? We need the alphabet soup song every time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Uh, 
failed, one failure and one advantage. <laughs> so she's still getting a little stuck. Not as stuck <laughs> as she was before, <laughs> but she didn't trip any uh, any alarms. Okay. Maybe with mm-hmm. the, uh, her advantage. There you go. So maybe she's able to send off a mental impulse as an, her advantage to um, to Sir Didymus because yeah. he's also a mentalist. Yeah, maybe she sends off a brief message to him as her status as to where yeah. she's at. Okay. Yeah. Maybe she giving might... him a boost die on his next action. There you Sounds go. Good to me. All right. Mm-hmm. So the the thing that awaits below, mm-hmm. he's gonna. St- it didn't detect anything when it mm-hmm. was Release briefly roused, so it's gonna go back to sleep. All right, and it's so it starts to just sl- slip off into to La La Land, land. <laughs> and as it does, it reaches out these mandibles and just grabs a little tighter down on his spinal cord, and you mm. see the guy. Ah, he wakes just Uh-oh. a little bit, just the ever low ever so slightest briefly awake for a second as the pain of it clamping down on his spine mm. even tighter all right oh, no and it's so that's all it's going to do is it's just going to clamp down a little tighter on him but mm. his difficulty next round for any mentalism checks for the next round are going to be cuz he's all he's awakeish right all right mm. it's going to be one higher all right. All right. Sir Didymus? Sir Didymus. So I see that. he. She gives me status. Yeah. And I'm looking yeah, and I little, look at him. He's in image. pain. I'm like, oh, crap. I get out and I I'm, 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 I, I look over the cocktails that are up there that they have. And I'm, I'm just going to turn up the turn up the pain meds a little bit and try and put them back under. <laughs> so okay. I don't know if, I don't yeah. know if you want a knowledge check for that or maybe a, another medicine check. I think Some, that seems like another medicine another check. Another medicine check. Okay. Yeah, but Let's do that. he's already on an IV drip, and all that stuff is there for you. So I'd so say boost? this is average difficult. Average? It's not going to okay. be hard like the previous one. Okay. And then uh, maybe a boost die because of all that equipment, or just you're well, reducing the difficulty because of that? I was reducing it. It would have been good. hard. Sounds it would have been a hard medicine check, but in this okay. case, it's normal. Average. That works. Now, two yellow, You're also going to get the green. boost die from gotcha. Serena's message. Oh, that's true. That's true. All right. So two purple... Two yellow, two green, and a blue. That look good to you, Tony, or do you want to flip it's, something? Are you going to flip? No, nope, I'm good. Okay, go ahead. A couple of blanks, but um, we have one simple success. There we go. As a net. Yep, net one simple success for that. So I'm able to... Um, so Sir Didymus is able to um, increase the morphine or whatever the mixture of pain medicine for that because i definitely saw that he was in pain and put just putting him back putting him back under just that mixture just for a moment and just do it yep and so, so. when serena makes her next check it won't or be as bad it won't be it won't be five difficulty one of which is red it'll be back to four <laughs> one of yeah. which is red <laughs> all right so, so we're going into round three, three. very quick encounter this is the right. last round okay because I think you're going to succeed this time. Hopefully. Let's hope. Well, or we'll maybe continue this on to our next episode, or maybe a couple <laughs> well, episodes you after don't that. Have, <laughs> you don't have much time. You I know, know that the guards, oh. the, the orderlies are coming through on their rounds soon. You're going to have to get mm. out of here quick. Mm. Mm. All right, so I've got you know, same difficulty as before, three purple, a red, two blacks, and my three yellow. Mm. Uh, I am going to flip a story point. I'll go okay. and get a, a green. Well, and well, Kraken is asleep, so he does not he does not um, upgrade this time. Sweet. Okay, that's good. And since we're still working on the whole mentalism things and everything, she she finally remembers that she had the me- a, a mental construct that could help her shroud her presence or intrude subtly. Uh, and get her uh, the information faster. You mean a mental be pos- armament? A mental armament that <laughs> might give her a boost dice in this case. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. All right. So let's go. Oops. All right. Whoop. We'll count there. That's still 
a um, threat. Chicken bones, oh chicken bones, what do you uh, say? Yes, yes, I'm exactly. rolling my dice. Lots of successes, only a couple of failures, so those two cancel out those two. There we go. <laughs> and that one. So I got uh, three, three successes and uh, an advantage. Yay! Very nice. So you get down there to that chest. You see the key is in mm. it. You turn there the key, go. it opens, and inside is this bottle filled with a blue fluid. Aha. Uh-huh. It's so already, was- it's corked, but the cork is starting to unwork itself. You need to quickly stick it somewhere where it won't <laughs> swim away with the water. What are you going to do? I'll have to stick it on uh, in her brazier. <laughs> so you, you cork it with a in nipple? <laughs> wow. Okay, I would have just drank the thing, but it's it's a little fountain oh, of knowledge. Oh, no. It's the recipe. That's all it is. Oh, yeah. Okay, so just drink it, uh, break it down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she drinks it. She now has the recipe. There you go. Awesome. All right. All right. And so, nice. She swims that's out. That's how it. you would, you know, use the narrative dice system, folks, to to to, mm-hmm. to navigate a mind hack or navigate mm-hmm. a mentalism encounter. Yeah. Now, again, this is only in its preliminary stages. If mm-hmm. you yeah. are out there and you think there needs to be some more balance put in, yep. if you mm-hmm. have an opinion that you'd like to share with us about how horribly we play this game. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or how long it, it takes Stefan to read his dice. Jeez. <laughs> you need to take, yeah, was... you, you need to take a, you need to take one, one, one rank. Okay. In, um, like sea hag for her. <laughs> so she can read, read hey. the chicken bones or the fish I bones. Could, I was pretty fast. I just removed some of the, uh, just not bad. <laughs> and yeah, and, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> We haven't used any kind of you know mental constructs for uh, right. hacking and defending, so uh, right. I just well, do threw that, that in. What this was did, just yeah. the simple version. What did but inspire also, us? Oh, go ahead, Don. But we also were going to build some talents around this, so maybe that mm-hmm. that that talent that you or that device that you remembered at the end could have been a talent that your character would have purchased. Yeah. Um, either way, we'll have some talents for this that will help make things a little easier. That will. Um, make doing specific actions maybe um um a little different right um and signature armaments yeah or signature fort what do we call them fortresses custom custom fortifications yeah we were we were inspired we were inspired by the first edition ad and d um psionic powers at the end you know your mind thrust mind ego whip Yep. And Delight yeah. Fortress, Tower of Iron Will, those types of things. If you guys have any idea, hey, we will take suggestions as to yes. what we could call our armaments or fortifications. If you do have that, want to create that trebuchet of um, e- ego thrusting or whatever, <laughs> you may. <laughs> uh, yeah, and either way, remember this is in its infancy. It's not yeah. been play tested yet. This was its first actual playtest on it sure air. Was. Yeah, it was. Um, this is something that we're going to playtest more over time. We're going to refine it. We're going to get it down to where we are happy with it. And then in the future, right before you know, before we release Tales of the Epsilon Eclipse to everyone, yeah. we're going to run a fully fleshed either adventure or encounter, as maybe an adventure as one of our actual plays. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. That involves um, some... Yeah. Mental hacking. Uh, mentalism. Yep. Yeah. Because I started just translating a few ice and icebreakers from Shadow of the Beanstalk just as an idea. Yeah, but, those were cool. Uh, you know, those instead of cool. battering ram, I called it crashing waves. Uh, Garrod, oh, yeah. I called it stingray, but there's, there's well, still that, a lot to that, I mean, the theme, the, work the, out the, of. the names of those, to the theme for Serena there. Oh, yeah. Being a mental, you know, mentalist diver there. And, mm-hmm. and maybe each one of those is a custom construct. Yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with having custom in Shadow of the Beanstalk, taking those yeah. those programs that they have in the book and you mm-hmm. customize them to your character. Yep. And, may, and you, you know, you could totally get into you have a hacking avatar and yeah. that's, you know, how your character does things. Your battering ram isn't a battering ram. You know, we've talked mm-hmm. about that. Yeah, um, it can look like anything. It can look like a tank. It's or, a hammerhead shark. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that slams into the 
mental barrier. Mm-hmm. But cool. yeah, so I hope you folks enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please email us. All right, yes, let's please. move on. Let's. All right. Well, thank you for uh, listening to the show. So th- that was our uh, initial uh, run at uh, mental constructs and mental uh, intrusions. Um, I just want to do a little uh, shout out to uh, some of our uh, fellow uh, Nerds International. Uh, one in particular is the Wild Eye Podcast. They're back. They say that they're, they're started to, uh, to produce uh, and record again. So we'll uh, go out and, and check them out. And uh, Excellent. yeah, there's a, and on MeWe as well, there's all the, the links to the other uh, members of Nerds International. Cool. All right. Well, um, well, our next show in a couple weeks, which I believe um, we have to work through when exactly we're recording that. Um, uh, it's like on Monday. Now. It will be on Monday. Oh, excellent. It will be on Monday, the March 9th, I believe. Yes, I believe so. I'll be coming back from Boston um, that morning. So, woohoo! And we're going to have Drain Smith himself, Scott Zumwalt. And we will be discussing something strange with him, which is Excellent. his setting. <laughs> we I always start strange. I was very saddened when Stefan informed of us that he was not going to be available for the show, but he's going to be having a freaking grand old time yeah <laughs> what the heck yeah <laughs> is, is your mom excited oh yeah she's excited uh, it's the first time he her and i are taking a vacation vacation just ourselves so uh, awesome, we've baby. had we've had family vacations but not just her and i so we're going to cuba a nice little Ooh. resort take it, break up the, the winter a little bit so gonna put our feet in cigars, gonna smoke some cigars with castro <laughs> yeah exactly Rock on buddy <laughs> awesome well we are going okay. to miss the hell out of you buddy yeah we yeah will. well i'll be missing you guys too but not too much since i'll be uh drinking uh, margaritas and tequila and <laughs> Rum? maybe we'll have maybe i'll have a tropical themed drink just in your in oh, for there you, you go. your honor recording. yeah something rum based yeah that's right, <laughs> scott, right. If you you're listening, a- scott if you're listening to this make sure you have your you have a tropical drink too Ready. And, <laughs> and listeners, if you have a suggestion on which tropical drink I should drink, well, you can email that or any other comments you have to us at finding the narrative podcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can go over to Facebook. Uh, we've had somebody actually this week reach out and message us. Um, just happy to be a part of the community and happy to say hi to us. And awesome. Stefan and I were going back and forth with him, and he was just. <laughs> Wow, you guys are fast! <laughs> it just so happened I was paying attention. It was one of those rare moments. Um, so when yeah, you were paying you can attention. Talk to us. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention to work. That's for sure. Oh, um, nice. Actually, I was off for the weekend, so it was it was while I was sitting around doing nothing around the house. So yeah, it gave me something to do. Yeah, um, it bodes well that he's impressed by speed. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope he's easily, he stays easily impressed. Yes. Uh, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, so you can talk to us directly at Facebook, uh, me and Stefan. You can talk to Stefan if you want to have a private mm-hmm. conversation with the Stefan. Yes. Over on Twitter, <laughs> at FTN underscore Genesis. Uh, and you can listen to our silliness, weirdness, and stupidity at Finding the Narrative podcast on Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, Spotify, and more because there's probably something else out there that we're on that I don't know about. <laughs> I probably, I think only maybe iHeartRadio, kinda. Yeah, I say sort kinda of. because it gets put up there, but not all the episodes are up there. So and not by us, and not by us. I don't know. <laughs> Who the hell knows? Just go to Podbean. It's a good. <laughs> yeah, and you can talk to us there too. You can also talk yeah. to us on me. I mean, we're everywhere. We're like mm-hmm. staff there. Leave a leave a yes. comment on um, YouTube's. Oh, I know. We were looking at iTunes. We were trying oh. to we were trying to look at the. I believe Tony, you said somebody somebody put a our comment. reviews. Yeah, some of our reviews. Yeah. We don't. Tony and I only see the American reviews. 
Right. Stefan, mm. and I believe Daryl said he saw like three reviews up there. We only saw They can one. only see the ones from Canada. You can only oh, see the ones from, from your, your country. From your yeah. So I, if you're listening to us in Europe or Australia and you've left us an iTunes review, thank you very much. We will never be able to read it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Cut and paste it into an email. Send us an email. Maybe. Maybe when I'm in Spain, I can look at anything in uh, in Europe. Uh, oh, that'd be, there. Yes, you could check. That's right. When you're walking across Spain, yeah. you could check on our European comments that are That's on it. maybe the yeah. one or two that are on iTunes, right? Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, folks. Yes. Have a great time. This is Tony saying, let's tell a story and spend some story points. And this is Stefan saying, dare to ask for those boost dice. That's right. Remember the rule of cool and your mental armaments, and just have fun. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Peace. Finding the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast, is not affiliated with or endorsed by any companies mentioned on this show. Any of the products mentioned on our show or appear on our website are the property and copyright of their respected owners. All items are used under fair use and educational and review purposes. All other items are the intellectual property of Finding the Narrative, a Genesis Pod, RPG Podcast, copyright 2020, all rights reserved.